So good morning, welcome. Uh, so we have a lot going on today, so uh, we figured we'd get started on time and hopefully uh, do our best not to get behind, at least uh, early on. Um, so welcome, I'm Lonnie Berger. I'm the director of the Institute for Research on Poverty at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, some of you may not be familiar with IRP or our work. Um, so we were actually the first federally funded uh, poverty research center. Um, and our mission is to produce actionable, rigorous, uh, research on the causes, consequences, and nature of poverty and its effects um, to inform policies and programs to ameliorate them. Um, we also seek to train the next generation of poverty policy scholars and to widely disseminate research evidence. Um, and we do this through wide networks of interdisciplinary scholars, practitioners, and policymakers with the goal of really linking research policy and practice. Um, so we currently serve as the National Poverty Research Center uh, funded by ASPE. Um, and one of our activities under this uh, cooperative agreement is, um, is to, to facilitate the U.S. Collaborative of Poverty Poverty Centers, which is currently uh, a network of nine poverty university-based poverty centers that really seek to marshal our joint resources to create a strong and ongoing research and policy agenda uh, around poverty for the country. Um, and one of the things that we do together uh, this is our second time doing together, is, is host an annual Poverty Research and Policy Forum in D.C. each fall. Um, so this is the second one. I'm grateful to our partners and funders at ASPE who have really been um, close collaborators uh, in this event and in all our work. Um, we are grateful to the UC Davis Center on Poverty Research who is co-sponsoring this event on taking the lead on behalf of the CPC um, for all their work on it. And we are uh, thrilled that, that the uh, uh, National Association of Welfare Research and Statistics was willing to co-sponsor um, and, and put their time and effort into what we think will be a great event. Um, I also would be remiss without thanking Dana Conley, who is our event planner extraordinaire, who handles all the moving parts and makes sure these things get off the ground um, and did a really terrific job, uh, what, as usual, this time. Um, and I want to thank our National Advisory Committee, uh, most of whom are here today and who will be uh, having a meeting tomorrow to, uh, to talk about our agenda going forward. Um, so the overall purpose of today is to highlight promising approaches to promoting opportunity and independence um, through policy and to stimulate product, pro, uh, productive exchange from state and federal policymakers and practitioners and researchers from across the country. Um, so our audience in the room is roughly a third federal policymakers and practitioners, a third state uh, policymakers and practitioners, and a third researchers from universities and think tanks. Um, so we have a really great mix, and we're looking forward to an engaging and insightful discussion. Um, we also have many more folks joining us by live stream, so I want to welcome you as well, um, and, and we're thrilled for your participation. Um, so I have to make one logistics announcement. Bathrooms are apparently very, very Steve Wagner is the principal deputy assistant, a secretary at the Administration for Children and Families at the US Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, before joining the administration, he was president of QEV Analytics, a public opinion and data analysis firm he founded in 1996. So thanks, Steve. Lonnie, thanks so much. It's a great pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to welcome you to Washington. I wanted to take a moment to uh, tell you why your work is so vital to what we are doing at the Administration for Children and Families. I feel like ACF is at the center of a confluence of forces that are compelling us to become an engine for the promotion of employment. I have in mind the President's executive order, which uh, laid out our administration's commitment to uh, employment, to promoting employment, and when you are in what is essentially a full employment economy, what that means is our task is to draw people from the economic sidelines back into the mainstream. And that's a particular challenge. I, I think that the main tool available to us for this task is less about work requirements, as important as those are, more about engagement. Our task is to engage the folks who are on the economic sidelines effectively to help them move toward self-sufficiency. We also at HHS have our own reimagine process that's underway, reimagine HHS, you probably know about. One of the shifts that is envisioned in the reimagine 
uh, project is to create at ACF a center of excellence for the promotion of employment. What that means is that we need to figure out how to be more effective at helping our partners, the states and the counties, uh, achieve the promotion of employment. We want to be a support structure for our partners, mindful that it's always going to be the states and the counties that are driving this process, but we want to help them become ever more effective at this task of bringing people from the economic sidelines back into the, the mainstream. We have a really exciting collaboration coming up in the new fiscal year with the Social Security Administration, the uh, purpose of which is to do demonstration projects to draw people from uh, either disability back into uh, the economy or to intervene before they get to the point of being on disability because we're terribly concerned about the health outcomes, the implications of being on disability for the, the health and well-being of those individuals. We're excited about the opportunity to collaborate with CMS on helping the uh, waiver states succeed in their engagement strategy. In fact, we have a meeting uh, tomorrow up in Baltimore with uh, Medicaid directors to talk about engagement. Our goal is not to drive people off the rolls of Medicaid, but to lift them up, to help them achieve self-sufficiency so that instead of Medicaid, they can receive their health care through either employer-sponsored health plans or through uh, exchanges or other private uh, means. We have the congressional mandate to create a What Works Clearinghouse, an effort being led by my friend Mark uh, Fuccello uh, sitting in the back, who you, from whom you'll hear later uh, today. This is, and, and, and this is one of those activities where your work is particularly relevant. It's meant to be a clearinghouse of effective strategies for moving people to employment, and we rely on, on your research and uh, OPRE and ASPE's evaluation of the interventions that you identify uh, in order to populate that, that library. So there's a lot of exciting things uh, going on. As I say, the challenge to us is, is to figure out how to, to redesign ACF to be this engine for the promotion of employment. And um, we look forward to our partnership with you uh, as we uh, head down that road. Thanks so much. So now I'd like to introduce Marion Page. Uh, she's a professor of economics and director of the Center for Poverty Research at UC Davis. Um, her research focuses on intergenerational mobility, the US safety net, education, gender, and equal equality of opportunity in the US. Um, and she's going to say a few words on behalf of UC Davis Poverty Center. Thanks, I'm gonna keep this really short, um, partly because Lonnie said many of the things that I, uh, I would have said, and we, I know we wanna get on to the research, but um, I wanna uh, welcome you all on behalf of the Center for Poverty Research at UC Davis. I also wanna acknowledge Marianne Bittler, who uh, worked very hard with me, uh, together with Lonnie and the other folks who put together this um, really exciting uh, lineup. Um, we are delighted to be here. The Center for Poverty Research, like the IRP, is focused on producing nonpartisan research related to poverty um, and disseminating that research out um, to the public. So we all are here because we are uh, both interested in reducing poverty and promoting self-sufficiency. And I was delighted to learn that there was such an equal balance here between um, researchers, academic researchers, practitioners, both at the federal and at the state level, because I think that is really the only way we can make progress on both of those fronts. And so I'm really excited to learn more about, um, uh, to have the dialogue that we're gonna have today. Thanks. Uh, and finally, Kate Probert. Uh, she is an uh, M50WP and SNAP Employment Services Division Manager with Ramsey County Workforce Solutions in Minnesota. And she's also the president of NOWERS. Um, and I think she'd like to say some welcome on behalf of NOWERS. Thank you. But, um, on behalf of NARS, we're delighted to be here and on sponsor event together. 
Our organization is focusing on promoting the exchange of ideas and how research and statistics really helping to develop intervention that work for our families. I think the key here is investing funding and research into developing intervention that have a long-term impact on the families and we serve. We have been doing a lot of programs and coming from the practitioner view, it is extremely important for research and practitioners to connect and make a different impact if we want to really focus in on ending poverty. I believe we all know cost and root causes of poverty and only to the equitable distribution of resources and focus not just on research but on equity and figuring out and having different conversation as we're driving forward and investing in the wellness of the full families. I do believe collectively we can figure out strategies to move forward and we're really excited to be here and share that um, and engage in conversations. And I will be remiss not to mention that we would love to see everybody to join NARS in New Orleans in 2019, July 28th through 31st, 2019 in Omni Royal. Please come over if you, you can learn more about incredible research and practitioners joining together, and you can just have simply fun listening to jazz. Thank you. <laughs>